Yo, mama's got it. What? Yo, daddy's got it. What? Do you have it? I'm talking about high blood pressure, y'all. What's up, San Antonio? I'm Dr. Kasim Butt, and I'm a kidney doctor. And welcome to Your Kidneys, Your Health, the premier channel to understand your body and your health in a simple way. So what is blood pressure? Blood pressure consists of two readings, the top number and the bottom number. The top number is the systolic, the bottom number is the diastolic, okay? And the difference between those two, the top number, the systolic, represents when the heart contracts or beats. So when the heart beats, it's your systolic. When your heart relaxes, that's actually your diastolic. So what is high blood pressure? High blood pressure is when your blood pressure consistently stays above the normal range. The old guideline said that high blood pressure was defined at greater than 140 over 90. But just recently, the American Heart Association redefined high blood pressure as anything greater than 130 over 80. So 130 over 80 is now the new definition of high blood pressure. Now this is a silent killer. People oftentimes will have it for many years and not even know it. So think of it this way. Your body has a plumbing system, okay, called the circulatory system. Okay, and when you have high blood pressure, you have high blood pressure within that system. So think of the plumbing system in your house. Now imagine if in your house's plumbing system, the pressure was high all the time. It would start to destroy the pipes, right? It would start to um, cause leaks. Now high blood pressure surprisingly is, is pretty common. Um, it's estimated that in the United States, anywhere from 30 to 45% of Americans over the age of 18 have it. And as we age, we're more predisposed to getting it. Here are the top four ways to improve your blood pressure without medications. Number four, decrease alcohol consumption. Excessive alcohol consumption can lead to high blood pressure. Therefore, if you have been diagnosed with high blood pressure, it's best to cut back on how much alcohol you're actually drinking on a daily basis. If you do drink, if you're a male, you probably need to limit your alcohol intake to about two drinks a day. Whereas if you're a female, you have to limit it to about one drink a day. Now here's the important thing. What is the definition of a drink of alcohol? Simply put, it's one 12 ounce glass of beer, a four to five ounce glass of wine, or one and a half ounces of hard liquor. Again, if you have been diagnosed with high blood pressure, you may wanna cut back on the alcohol to see if it helps. Number three, low salt diet. What I want you to understand is that in some people, excessive salt intake can actually lead to high blood pressure. These people are considered salt sensitive. Now, not everyone is salt sensitive. Some people are genetically prone to being it, but there are factors that, that put you at risk for being more salt sensitive, include being older, um, being African-American, being overweight or obese, having kidney disease, or having heart disease. So I know what you're gonna say. I barely use a salt shaker, so it's not my problem. Well, the problem is it's not just the salt you put on top. It's actually the salt that's already infused into the food itself. In fact, about 75% of the sodium intake we get in our diets come from prepackaged, processed, and restaurant foods. Now, to get an understanding of how much sodium is actually in your food, you'd have to look at, look at, look at the food label. The food label is the label in the back of the food, which is designed by the FDA. If you scroll down, it lists sodium in terms of milligrams. So how many milligrams of sodium in a day should I eat? Well, there are tons of guidelines out there, different guidelines by different organizations, some calling for less than 2,000 milligrams, some calling for less than even 1,500 milligrams. In my personal opinion, that's a very hard target to make. So if you have health-related issues, I would say shoot for a target of anywhere between 2,000 and 2,500 milligrams a day. All right, 2,000 to 2,500 milligrams a day. And be sure not to go above 3,000 milligrams a day. The average American gets almost 4,000 milligrams a day. So if you even cut back to that, you'd make some improvements. So next time you go out there, take a look at the food label and see how much sodium is actually in what you're eating. Number two, check your blood pressure at home. So I want you to understand your blood pressure throughout the day varies and actually can vary tremendously sometimes if you're exposed to certain stresses, like the stress of seeing a doctor. And in fact, um, you can actually be diagnosed with something called white coat hypertension, meaning when you go to the doctor's office, your blood pressure goes up. 
So to make sure your blood pressure is controlled, whether you're on meds or not, is to check your blood pressure at home. Now, in order to do this, you'd have to buy blood pressure for home. What I would advise you to do, go to your local pharmacy or um, grocery store and see what they have available. You don't have to get the most expensive one, but I wouldn't opt for the cheapest one either. So something middle of the road, probably around 40 or 50 bucks. Also, try to get a blood pressure cuff that checks it in the upper arm. I don't think the ones that check it in the wrist are as accurate. Now to check your blood pressure at home, I would advise you to do a few things. One is make sure you are calm and relaxed. If you are on medications, uh, make sure you've taken them that day. Be, be sitting at a sofa or a chair with an armrest, keeping your arm level to your heart. Make sure your legs are straight and not crossed. Then wait about five minutes. After five minutes, then take your blood pressure. Um, in fact, take it twice. Then do yourself a favor. Write those numbers down on a piece of paper and keep a log of them. As far as timing, you could take it once, twice, three times a day if you'd like, but do yourself a favor and be consistent. Because blood pressure varies throughout the day, it's best to take it at a consistent time. So if you take it at 10 a.m., take it at 10 a.m. every day. By keeping this log, it will really help your doctor really understand how well your blood pressure is being managed. And the number one way to reduce your blood pressure without medications is weight loss and exercise. Now this is something I take very seriously because I realize that weight loss and exercise are the true cure for most of the ailments in our society. You see, in my practice, my patients have high blood pressure, diabetes, high cholesterol, heart disease, and kidney disease. The funny thing is, in actuality, they really have one disease, obesity, which leads to all the other diseases. I have had numerous patients of mine actually lose weight, 10, 20, 30 pounds. And when they did this, they either decreased or came off of some high blood pressure medications because all of a sudden their blood pressure is much better controlled. We live in a culture of extremes, right? We live this incredibly sedentary lifestyle where we overeat. And then to compensate for this, what we do is we do exercise routines designed to get you six pack abs. It makes no sense. First, eat till you're satisfied, not until you're full. In other words, eat until you're no longer hungry, not until when you're stuffed. You gotta remember, losing weight is about 80% diet and 20% exercise. You can't just sweat off the fat, you actually have to decrease your consumption of food. Also, if you have any of the diseases that I mentioned earlier, and you may want to ask your primary doctor to refer you to a dietitian, or you may want to find one yourself. Um, the thing is, you may want to make sure that your insurance will actually cover for it. Now, even if it doesn't, to be honest with you, it's well worth the investment. You see, a dietitian will take the time to go over your diet, see what you're doing wrong, see what you're doing right. She may even ask you to do a food diary where you actually write down what you take in for over, over a period of days. As far as exercise, this is something I personally take very seriously. I want you to understand the advice that I give you on this channel are things that I actually implement in my own, own life. So every morning I wake up early, I exercise for about 30 to 40 minutes every day. I incorporate uh, both cardio and resistance weight training. If you have any heart or health conditions, you may wanna ask your primary doctor or cardiologist if you're safe to engage in exercise. But to begin for yourself, start real simple. I would advise about 150 minutes of uh, moderate exercise a week. So that translates into roughly 30 minutes a day, five times a week. But to start off, start simple. Just start with an uh, easy walk, either um, before work or after work, and take your spouse with you. Over the period of time, you can gradually build up that walk to a brisk walk, and then perhaps even to a jog. And if that's not your thing, you can get a gym membership, maybe start off on an elliptical trainer, a treadmill, or if you want, uh, there are tons of free exercise routines on YouTube for people of all ages and abilities. Trust me, if you implement small changes about diet and exercise in your life, it will not only change your health, but it'll also change your life. Well, if you like what I said, or you got something to say about it, put comments in the comment section below. And again, I'm just starting out. So I need all the help I can get. So if you like this video, please share it. Please like my Facebook page. And if you can, subscribe to my YouTube channel. And remember, it's your kidneys, your health.